Ever since my husband and I got our dog Nitro, we've had this idea to turn him into Gandalf. Nitro is a miniature schnauzer, and as you may or may not know, miniature schnauzers have these cute little beards. And who also has a beard? Yes, Gandalf. Thus ends the similarities, but they were more than enough for our childish minds to find amusement in creating Nitro the Grey. To start this project, I had to measure my dog, so I measured his head and body and set to work creating paper templates for the costume. I began with creating the hat, thinking that would be simple enough, but apparently trying to make a cone is like trying to get the ring to Mordor. Anyway, I arbitrarily decided that his little wizard hat needed to be around 10 inches across. I decided this because Nitro's head is about 4 inches wide. To make the brim, I needed to make a circle. And while I could have created a circle on my Cricut out of cardstock that had a diameter of 10 inches, I thought that was personally just too difficult at the time. Mainly because I didn't have my Cricut set up and that would be too much work. So I used a pencil with a string 5 inches long to draw a circle. Then I marked a spot for the hole in the middle by drawing a bunch of 4 inch lines through the center point. I traced around the edge of those lines to create a circle. Are my circles perfect? No. Is Gandalf's hat perfect? Yes, obviously. Next I needed to make a cone. So to make a cone we did use some math. You need a piece of paper at least as long as you want your cone to be tall. So mine was eight inches, so I made it eight inches long. But the width that you need is approximately the radius that you want the butt base of your cone to be multiplied by pi or something. I'll put it up here. And then that's essentially kind of the size of paper you're going to need roughly. It ended up not exactly being perfect because then all I did was roll it up and make a cone and tape the edges down, folded the cone down and trimmed along the edges on either side to kind of round the bottom out so it sat relatively flush and wasn't wobbly at all. And then to make the template for the cone, I just cut up one side and opened it up. And then I could trace it out on another piece of cardstock. And then that would be my template for the cone for the top of the hat. And then I took and tried it on my dog, which is uh, as entertaining as it sounds. <laughs> oh, Nitro, do you want to be turned into a wizard? So for whatever reason, making the cone for the top part of the hat was harder than it should have been. I don't know why. I think we made it harder than it should have been. But we ended up with a cone and we ended up with a template that I could use. Yay. At this point in time, I also began patterning the cloak. Wrapping paper works really well for this, especially when it has the grid on the back side of the paper because those grid markings are one inch by one inch. I used Nitro's measurements to basically make a big rectangle that I felt like would fit him. So I measured down his back and then down around his side. So I think he was like 15 by eight, basically making a big rectangle that would fit his measurements. And then I trimmed down a little bit on the two corners that would be where his shoulders are. And then to Nitro's annoyance, I made him try on the little paper hat and cloak. Again, he wasn't amused, but we were. I then measured his chest to see how long the straps would need to be to come around the front to hold the cloak on. The fabric I'm using for this, the wool, is some fabric that was left over from a cloak that my husband made. So yes, I know it doesn't match the color of Gandalf's hat and cloak, but it's all I had and it was free. And as crafters, we really like free. Then I traced around the hat templates onto the wool and cut them out. I left around a half inch of seam allowance around the edges of the hat pieces as well. I then glued one of the wool brim pieces to one side of the brim template that I used. I cut slits around the edges of that piece on the outer and inner side and then folded them over onto the 
thicker piece of paper that I used and glued them down. Hot glue probably would have been quicker for this. I was looking for some fabric glue, but I didn't have any of that. So I ended up using the Beacon craft glue. It did work fine, but I think if you used hot glue, you wouldn't have to hold it down as long. It would hold faster in that spot. I also ended up cutting the edge of the other wool donut piece for the brim, cutting off the seam allowance edging that I had allowed so it would fit on the inside of the under aspect of the hat, if that makes sense. So it would cover up all the other folded over glued edges. And then I glued that down as well and weighted it down and let it dry. And I didn't glue the inner aspect of it. I left that seam allowance and cut slits in that area because I ended up using that part to attach the cone to the hat. I then cut out the cone piece from the wool and added some leftover interfacing that I had from a previous project to this piece to add some stiffness to the fabric. I made a mock-up of the cloak using an old pillowcase to see if my measurements that I had made out of my first template would fit nitro. When I put it on him, it was a little small, so I ended up going back in, making another template that was just a little bit longer and wider for him. Then I cut that out of the pillowcase fabric and made another mock-up of that sizing. Once I was happy with the fit, I traced the template onto the wool fabric and cut those pieces out as well. When the cloak pieces were cut out, I sewed them up. So basically I just sewed the seams around the edges of the large rectangular piece. I also sewed up the cloak straps and made little tubes out of them that I could flip inside out and sewed them to the cloak as well. While I was at the sewing machine, I also sewed up the seam of the cone of the hat. Having never made a hat before, I was a little bit stumped as to how to connect the cone to the brim of the hat. My original plan as to what I was thinking when I was designing it wasn't going to work because <laughs> I thought I could just glue that inner seam I had left on the brim up inside the cone. And I kind of did that, but I also ended up cutting slits around the bottom side of the cone and gluing that down to the brim and then also reinforcing it by taking the other fabric from the bottom of the brim and gluing that up inside the cone. I then took a piece of elastic that I had and roughly measured around underneath Nitro's head from his temples just around his chin and up the other side, cut that elastic and stitched it into the hat. I hand sewed a button onto the cloak and made a little buttonhole and just added some hand stitching around the buttonhole to to reinforce that area so that the fabric didn't tear. At this point I tried the costume on Nitro again to see how it would fit and well Justin and I agreed that he looked ridiculously cute in it. There was a couple of things that I needed to alter and there was something I felt like it was missing. The cloak straps ended up being too long, so I shortened one side, the side with the button sewn on it, so I just cut the fabric off and reattached it back onto the cloak. I sewed the tip of the hat down just so it wasn't pointing straight up to give it more of that floppy wizard hat look. I also reinforced the chin straps at this point in time and added some glue where I had stitched them on and put some wool fabric over that area to add a little bit of reinforcement in those spots. I also found a little dongle that I had borrowed from something else. It attached it just to the bottom so we could kind of cinch the hat up under his chin without having it being too tight on him. And since the thing that I felt the cloak was missing was a hood, I made him a hood. Having only ever made one hood before on a Christmas coat that I was making for a Krampus costume, which I have yet to post and maybe you'll see that this year. I was trying to remember how that hood was constructed just from memory and the shape of the pieces that went into that. So I ended up sketching out some pieces and then cutting them out on the pillowcase fabric again and sewing them together just as a little mock-up to see if I was correct or not. And I was not. So then I ended up pulling out the pattern pieces that I used for the coat and just using them as a guide to design the hood pieces for Nitro's little cloak. Basically I just looked at the shape of them and measured across the width of his shoulder pieces of his cloak and made sure the combined width of the cloak hood pieces for him would fit across that edge. And then again like the 
size of his hat, I just arbitrarily decided how long I wanted it to go down the back side of him and made those pieces that length, approximately. Hey, get out of there. After I had sketched out the pieces that I would need, I cut them out again on the pillowcase fabric and sewed them together to make sure that they would fit together properly before tracing them out and cutting them out on the wool fabric. I didn't want to mess it up by using up too much of the good fabric. So making a mock-up has certainly helped me with this and having never actually done anything like that before where I had to design a thing, it is incredibly useful. So would 100% recommend. Once the hood was sewn together, I attached it to the cloak and oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how freaking cute this thing is. It's just like so adorable. It's, it's like a wee little hobbit cloak, but like for a dog. After trying on everything on Nitro again to make sure everything was fitting, his little cloak was falling off. So I did may end up making him a little underbelly strap that would help keep the cloak on him without him falling off his body when he's going on his adventures. Honestly, I think this is the greatest thing I have ever made. Okay, my children are pretty great, but this is one of the greatest things I have ever made. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more costumes for dogs. I feel like Nova's feeling a little left out, so if you have any ideas for something to make for her, let me know what you think, because I have ideas. My name is Pam, and this is Total Pamarchy, the craft channel with a little anarchy. Until next time, bye. Good boy. Good boy.